I knew I wanted more. I wanted to be better. Um, I wanted more for myself than to feel that anxious. Only you can make it happen. No one is coming to save you. You wanna do something, fucking do it. When you've got the whole world against you and yet you can wholeheartedly say, I showed up as the ultimate best version of myself ever yeah. because I owe it to myself and that's what I wanna do. Welcome to the Mindset Mill podcast. I'm going to go straight in with a question and you'll know why I'm asking you this. What does the obstacle is the way mean to you? Ooh, straight in there. <laughs> um, wow. So basically, if anyone is listening and hasn't read The Obstacle is the Way, you are very much missing out because it is probably the best book I've ever read. Um, and I feel like it's just it just embodies every single struggle, every single thing that life throws at you is just another obstacle for you to climb. And if you haven't read the book, please read it because it will completely change your life. So what it means to me, growth, resilience, overcoming, taking ownership, literally everything. It is so applicable in every single element of your life. It's, it's just amazing. <laughs> And um, do you remember where you were when you first read the book as in like physically where you were and where in your life? Because I can remember it so vividly. So I'm wondering whether it kind of left that same impact on you. Yeah, I remember in my uni bedroom, second year on my bed, probably had the fairy lights on, obviously got to make it cozy somehow. <laughs> um, just feeling like I'd started coaching at that point. I'd started really taking an interest into personal growth and really wanting to level up, but just wasn't sure how, obviously you've got, you know, everyone's got their own backstory and you, wanting to learn how to almost use that to become better. I don't think I realized the impact it would have on me. I read the, um, you know, the daily meditations, yep. read that first, well, did a page a day, um, and then just knew like, every single thing they were saying I needed to read it and I needed to know more about how I could overcome my obstacles so yeah really vivid memory as well as to just how I was where I was sat how I was feeling it it for me was like similar it was a couple of years probably ahead of where you were in life because I think I was like six months into my graduate scheme after uni and I was you know when you've got such a good book that you're excited to get home and like yeah. read it get in bed so you can like yeah. actually set aside some time for it or whether you read in the morning like you wake up and you're excited to to read it was like that it was like I, I was sucked into it it was like that book the obstacle is a way is the way by ryan holiday it's like a vortex and i just completely felt like my mindset in that moment changed and i was like the victim mentality washed away <laughs> just <laughs> gone forever of course it's easy to dip in and out of it sometimes but when you've got that those mantras in the back of your mind you know control what you can control accept what you can't control when your brain functions like that you just become so much more peaceful 100%. and it was in that moment where I was working a job that I hated I didn't feel like I really liked who I was at that point. You know, it was a really strange transitional phase for me trying to find my feet, like having left uni and then going into the corporate world, not really understanding the dynamics. Like I just felt really confused. And reading that book helped me to zone in on the things that actually are worth my time. Mm. Because we can get so caught up in things that aren't worth our time and it wastes time making progress. And I'm going to be completely honest and say like your progression over the past year, I've just seen you go whoosh, and to anyone who's listening on audio, I did a very big point to the <laughs> point to the sky. Um, absolutely crazy. And I'm interested to know how much you feel the philosophy of stoicism, which is basically in a nutshell, what I'd explained is controlling what you can control, accepting what you can't control, how much that mindset has contributed to such rapid personal growth professional growth um also a lot of growth in terms of the muscle that you put on because you you're looking jacked um <laughs> how has that contributed I think more than anything just learning to take control so I have 
well, I did suffer with anxiety really badly for quite a while, was on the sertraline, was had the therapy, had like multiple different therapies with the NHS and then with uni and then paid for a therapist um, to try and get my anxiety under control. And it was almost like I read this book and I was like, oh shit, it's all in my head. Like it is all, I can control how I feel. And I feel like with okay, this might come across the wrong way, but with things like anxiety, sometimes in my case, for example, it was, you almost play into it. I played into it, right? So because I had those anxious thoughts, it was like, okay, I have anxiety. So anxiety is my identity. I can't go to the shop because anxiety is my identity. And it almost stripped me of that because it it makes you think differently. And it makes you think about, okay, like, I actually have the control now. I I get to choose to not feel anxious if I have to, if I think about it in a different way. So I think the stoic philosophies and the obstacles the way and listening to Ryan Holiday podcast, everything like that, it just really, it forces you to think differently and it forces you to really take control of your own situation, your own life and your own mind as well. Um, There's one really, really powerful story that i can never forget in the obstacle is the way I'm sure you'll know which one um it's about I can't remember the person he was in prison and he was wrongfully committed and they would punish him and punish him and yet he still felt grateful because at every single point he thought like you can't take my mind away from me you can punish me you can label me you can do whatever but you will never be able to change my brain and how I think about these things and I was like fuck like I'm I'm getting anxious catching the bus like this like I I get to choose how I respond to this situation um and I think that massively helped shape me as an individual and realizing when things go wrong or when things were stressful I would literally (laughs) this is so random but I just remember all through uni after I read the book and got into it I'd like smirk (laughs) and be like obstacle is the way like (laughs) fucking lean into it because it's going to be challenging whether whether I lean into it or, you know, resist it and feel anxious. It's just about how I approach that situation. And that was key for me with like managing uni stress and growing coaching and my own personal growth and my own physique development was, okay, well, obstacles the way, like have a little giggle to yourself because now it gets exciting. I literally vibe with that so much. <laughs> it's like when something shit happens, it it's literally within the space now of 10 seconds. I'm like, oh, this is going to be tough, but I'm going to get something fucking great out of this, you know? Like it could be one of the most tragic things going on in my life. And I'm like, I wonder what this is going to teach me. Yeah. To have that mindset, it just brings so much power back into your own hands. Again, it's actually regaining more control than you think you had initially. And the story of what you said, I believe it's Nelson Mandela Mm. who was just like, I will be kind, I will be a good person they will never take away my character and for what I believe is right and good in this world. And it is really, really powerful when you've got the whole world against you and yet you can wholeheartedly say, I showed up as the ultimate best version of myself ever because I owe it to myself and that's what I want to do. And that is being really strong and certain on your identity, which you say when you were struggling with your anxiety, that after that, you felt like it cured you. Like you're like, well, now... I know that I choose to be anxious, so I'm going to choose not to. But my question is, why did you choose, why did you not choose to remain the same oh, and to okay. not stay in the anxious mode? Because what I'm referring to is I will see it with clients, I'll see it with people. They will have the mindset work, right? Mm-hmm. They'll know that they've got stress management techniques and tools, and they'll know that actually a lot of what they're feeling, the negative emotions that are, you know, escalating, it's all stemming from their mind. Mm-hmm yet they don't seem to actually say, okay, I'm going to control what I can control and I'm not going to give airtime to the other things. I'm just going to get on with what I can do. It's almost like the pain of changing is too much for them. Mm. So they say stuck in their own ways, but you did change. Yeah. The question is why, why was that so important for you? I knew I wanted more. I wanted to be better. Um, I wanted more for myself than to feel that anxious loop of anxiety and then sadness and then anxiety and then deep sadness and just not loving the day to day and I knew there was more out there I knew there was more I could feel and I could feel better so I think that was a big driver for me um I just 
wanted to be better. Like I wanted to get out of that mindset. And I think it's very difficult when you're in that mindset, kind of similar to what you're saying with clients getting stuck there. It is hard to pull yourself out of it. Like no one's saying that it's easy. I think a lot of people mistake that and think we find it easy. We don't, <laughs> it's not easy to pull yourself out of anxiety or out of a really, really sad time or when you're going through shit. But what's the alternative? Like the thing is ha gonna happen anyway. Like you're gonna have the stress, you're gonna have the anxiety, but it's almost learning to m carry on moving even when you feel like shit. Like even when you don't want to just carry on doing the do or do the things that will help because otherwise you are just staying stuck in that cycle and you can't you can't get out of it when you're in it. Does that make sense? Like if you are feeling really down, really anxious all the time, you have to get yourself out of that anxious feeling. Otherwise you're stuck in this like tornado of feelings until you're like, no, I'm, I'm not doing this anymore. You have to like launch yourself out of it. And this is something which we recently said to our clients when we had like a uh, recalibrate event day, we went through a bit of a stress management workshop. And one of the things that we said is as your coaches, if you are paralyzed by stress or negative emotions, anxiety, when you are in that mode, and you got so deep into it, it's because you've allowed yourself to be sucked into it. Mm. And it's really fucking hard for us to pull you out. In fact, yeah. we can't. Yeah. Unless you are actually going to give us your hand and be like, I'm willing to do the work for us to help pull you out of that, to get you in a position where you're able to do the simple things you need to do to achieve your physique goal, or health goal, yeah. whatever, then you're just destined to be stuck. Yeah. And there has to be, along with that knowledge of, okay, the stoic philosophy, the obstacle is the way, you have to pair that with a sense of purpose. And your sense of purpose to do a freaking uni degree, grow your coaching business to where you've grown it to. I was just like sat scratching my head. I was like, this Evie girl, she's, <laughs> she's gonna go very far. She's got something about her. Um, and you know, we've obviously grown a lot closer over the last year or so as you spent more time here in Dubai. Um, and it's just been so good to see you having achieved things where we've kind of, you know, crossed paths several times uh, through mentorships and other things like that. So one of the things that I'm interested to know is why did you do more than you actually needed to when it came to fulfilling your sense of purpose? Because I'm assuming that your sense of purpose and what makes you feel good is your whole ethos, your whole coaching brand, getting women to become absolute bosses. So why did you still keep doing your degree alongside that? <laughs> um, I think even from a younger age, I consumed so much YouTube of people like Grace Beverly yeah. and like Unjaded Jade, all the study people, right? And I don't know why, no one told me to watch it. No one... I knew was watching it, but I just became addicted <laughs> to learning about how to study and how to get better grades. And then I got shit grades in GCSEs. I did really, really bad. I cried. <laughs> I was like, fuck. Um, and then I think throughout my A-levels, I almost wanted to work to prove myself that I could do it. And so I did my A-levels and then I worked alongside because girls gotta make money. Like <laughs> I've got to survive. Like my money, mum and dad weren't giving me money. So I had to make money. And then you almost adopt this kind of like, I feel like I did anyway, a very strong work ethic because I wanted the better tips from customers. I wanted to be better, more approval from my boss. And I wanted to be able to do that whilst also do my A-levels. And then I wanted to be the best student. So I think I was always almost in competition with myself. I'm not a very competitive person, which I think surprises people, but I literally could not give a shit what anyone else is doing. I'm, I'm only in competition with myself, but again, I'm not very competitive. Um, so it was always just, um, I'll be honest, like most of it was for approval from other people to begin with, with A-levels, with like working hard. I wanted someone to give me a pat on the back and go, oh, like you've done really well. Um, and then when it came to uni, again, I did really well in my A-levels because I worked my ass off. And then when I got to uni, I was like, God, these people are miserable. Like all they do is complain. They would go out drinking. They would complain about uni. Like they'd have one lecture a day and they'd be like, God, like this is awful. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Um, and I knew like way before then that I wanted to do coaching, but essentially I went to uni 
because I didn't want to live at home anymore. So I went to uni to get out of the house. Um, where I'm from, there's not a lot of opportunities. So it was kind of like the safe option to move out, but have that sense of like, oh, but it's okay because she's gone to uni. Like she's not bl losing, blown, blown a life away. So I went to uni, um, started coaching, loved coaching so, so, so much, but I'd already started the degree again work my ass off to get there. I'm not just going to quit. Like I'm not a quitter. So I was like, okay, well, we're going to do both and we're going to work our asses off in both elements to do the best. And I, not to toot my own horn, but I did really well at uni. Um, I got really, really good grades, did way better than any of my friends who did not work or anything like that. And I think it's just that always wanting to, more from yourself, like knowing you're capable of more, going back to Grace Beverly, Unjaded Jade, all the study gods who always wanted to be better. They always wanted to get better grades. And I think that just kind of stuck with me is just always wanting to be the best version of myself and know that I've given it my absolute all. I wasn't happy to drop out of uni, even though I was encouraged to by many people. I wasn't happy to do that because I'd worked hard to get there and I knew I could do it. I knew I could do both and excel at both and kind of almost wanted to prove myself a little bit, but it played to my favor. So, yeah. I literally feel like I'm speaking to myself. <laughs> like it's, it's crazy because it's the exact same thing. Yeah. I completely flunked my AS levels, worked so hard, redid all of my exams, basically did all my A-levels in one year yeah. just to desperately get away from home yeah. and to have the opportunity of a better life. And just for context, Evie, what did you study at uni? Marketing. Marketing. It's not, uh, you know, pissing in the park kind of degree. Uh, you say that, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think just from your work ethic, even if it was an easy degree, you didn't make it easy for yourself. Regardless, I can completely understand because I spent my whole life in a freaking lab um, yeah. whilst I was at uni. I can understand what it was like where other people are like exhausted after they've been told to go and read a book. And I'm like, that's all you got to do. And I'm, yeah. and I'm there playing with chemicals all day. So that level of discipline and as you say, wanting more for yourself, I find that really interesting because when it comes to what you're driven by, you mentioned to prove things to yourself, to prove things to others. Is that the only driver or did it then transition into something else throughout your journey? Because I believe when we're trying to get validation from others, there's definitely only so far that yeah. we can propel ourselves. So what was the switch or was there a switch? I think the switch was so gradual that I didn't notice it over time because, you know, A-levels, obviously the driver was to get into a good uni and I'd always say to myself, this is really random, but even when I was like tired and didn't want to do the work or I'd, I'd come home from, I worked as a, a waitress and I'd come home so late at like 11 PM and have to be up again at seven to go to college. Cause I lived quite far away. And I would always just be like the, <laughs> you know, Georgie Fitz quote, no one cares what Carter. Yep. Um, but I'd apply it to A level. So I'd be like, the examiners don't give a shit that you're tired right now, work harder. And that always stuck with me. Um, and I always did that. So initially it was to do well in my A-levels to kind of prove myself. Then it was, when you get to uni, it's like no one's holding you accountable anymore. A-levels was very much like, do this piece of work by then. Um, and this is when what we're going to study. This is when we're going to study it. As soon as you get to uni, like the ball is in your, your court, like everything, they don't tell you, they don't tell you when your lectures are. Like you go from having a timetable to be like, your, your lectures are scattered. Like sometimes they'll let you know when you, a lecture is through an email. Like you have to have such personal accountability, which most of my course mates did not have and thus missed a shit ton of work. Um, but I think the, the kind of gradual transition for me was actually like loving the process and like, wow, this is really fun. Like I can make a life for myself I could I'm making impact on women's lives like more than I ever thought I could you know you start when you start PT and you're like oh like let's just get have fun in the gym and then you kind of move towards like shit now we're we're changing your body we're changing how you feel about yourself where your mindset shifted like you no longer feel anxious in the gym anymore and I think that feeling then becomes addictive of helping others um, and I think over time, my purpose has very much shifted from doing it for others 
to now almost doing it for others, but in a different way, because I want to help others rather than prove myself. Um, but also even just like personal development, like, God, there's, there's so, so much that I could talk about when it comes to personal development, but you go from doing it for, to get out of a very, very dark hole to now doing it to become like the best version of yourself. So you go from like almost doing it meant to get out of mental debt to now doing it's like become a mental millionaire like it's such a transition that now you're wanting to like become one percent better every day like how can I have responded to that situation better how could I have treated that person better and it just becomes I think it's fun like it, it's really fun working on that journey for yourself I was actually gonna say it's like a video game yeah. it feels like when you get to the level of personal development uh growing a business just looking at your life in terms of what can I improve? It feels like we're in a video game. It's like, mm, what if I do this thing? Or what if I invest my coins into this and yeah. then see what I learn from it? And that's literally the the ethos that I get from you and your work ethic. I feel like you exude that, as you say, that 1% better, but not in a way that's a detriment to looking after your well-being and doing what's right for you. Mm -hmm. That's of course, something that we have to put at the forefront. Yeah. However, there is a slight softness that I believe a lot of other female coaches within our industry will show that can be of detriment to a certain extent. I believe you've got a really nice balance of understanding and teaching discipline as well as self-compassion because you've watched these incredible inspirational women on YouTube, you know, doing degrees at freaking oxford whilst growing multi-million if not billion now yeah. uh, businesses and exactly the same i remember there watching grace being like how are you functioning like literally how do you do that and then it started to think I, I started to again similar to you operate in terms of okay i'm a machine now we're going to do this in the morning <laughs> we're going to do this in the afternoon mm -hmm. and i learned that very early on so if you could go back in time and you could speak to yourself back then where you just had no organization, you didn't know how to study, you didn't know how to use your time effectively. What's the biggest piece of advice that you would give yourself? Ooh, um, for one, it was that I just didn't enjoy a lot of it. Um, I was a very emotional teenager. Jesus Christ, I was very, very emotional. Um, so firstly, I think I would just tell her like, it's all right, you're gonna be fine. It's all gonna work out hun um but more than anything you know when when it comes to organization and I think it is that whole soppy quote but like if you love what you're doing you won't have any issues doing it like coaching I could I could be researching for hours and just fall into a deep hole of like learning about nutrition or you know creating resources for clients or do even like podcasts content whatever it may be I could do that so easily for hours and hours. I think it has to interest you. And of course, like the school system, the majority of it doesn't interest me personally. And so it, it does become a little bit more difficult to focus on those things. But I think I would honestly just give myself like a nice little chat talking to and be like, what are you playing at? Because my parents didn't really enforce that. There was no like, are you revising tonight? Have you done your homework? It was just like see you at dinner like <laughs> have a nice afternoon um so I think I would definitely kind of give myself a good little shake and be like you're gonna fail unless you pull your finger out your ass um because I no one else is gonna do it for me and I actually think that's now reflecting that was a privilege that no one else told me to revise and no one else told me to do the work because had they maybe I wouldn't be where I am because I had to take full responsibility for it um so yeah, it's bringing it back to controlling the controllables. And one of my favorite quotes, which is no one is coming to save you. I tell myself that every single time that I'm overwhelmed yeah. when I'm really busy with work, if I'm not feeling 100% and I've got other people relying on me, it's like, guess what? No one is coming to save yeah. you. Nobody cares, work harder. It's a really almost what some people might think is harsh, mindset to instill in yourself but what it allows you is complete autonomy and control over what you do in that situation yeah so yeah maybe going back to 15 year old me 15 16 I think I was all right then it was the 17s where I started to behave 
a little bit out of the ordinary and then didn't do so well in my A levels. But I literally would have been like, hey, you know, what you're avoiding. Oh, there's another Chris Williamson's quote that he says all the time. I love Chris Williamson. The something is in the is that Hormozy? Which quote? Um, I think it's like the something is in the work that you're avoiding. The mm. success or the someone's gonna be listening to this and they're gonna be like, I know what it is. I know what it is. <laughs> But I think it's like the success or the joy is in the work that you're avoiding. Yeah. And from that mindset, I think instilling that again into ourselves. And I, f I see us as like little little flowers just trying to pollinate other people to try and like echo that down. Yeah. I'm interested to have an understanding for the mindset aspect of your coaching service, how much that's developed and how much it's become one of the key pillars over the last, you know, few years as you've done so much mm. personal development because, you know, I feel like mine, like my side style of coaching is trending more and more towards therapy each week. <laughs> We're not therapists, I promise. But it's something where, you know, when the brain isn't working, the body yeah. is not going to follow. So how has your coaching service changed for that, you know, key pillar to really have a big impact on your ladies? I think very, very similar. Like mine's trending more towards therapy now. I was actually looking last night at getting my qualifications because I think what we don't, what you don't necessarily realize when you start your, your fitness journey or whether you're starting to get coached by a coach is the drastic impact that mindset plays. And I think when when I started with my first coach um it was just about you know getting a better body cool did that amazing what's next and one thing that is so 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 important to me is that mental development because if we don't look after your mindset what are you going to do on a bad day like the stress is going to overwhelm you you're not going to go to the gym then you don't get the physical results then you think that coaching doesn't work ha huh. We start at the mindset. So I feel like everything comes back to the mind, even when it just comes to things like sleep and stress management. Like if you're stressed all the time, if you don't sleep, then your body is not going to respond. So we need to work on the mindset. And I, lit I, I genuinely like place such an emphasis on that mindset work because I don't think that we can thrive without working on it. I don't think you'll get the success in your, your body that you want unless we work on your mindset even like gut health, like, oh my goodness, the, the, the role that your mind plays on that is drastic. And I think the integrating mindset work into coaching is so important, um, from self-limiting beliefs to imposter syndrome, to even just encouraging our girls to want more for themselves. Like shit, you don't have to work at, at your local shop for the rest of your life. Like you can do something more. And a lot of people don't realize that they don't, have that encouragement or the drive or the 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 role models to see that they can actually ask for more from themselves and achieve more so I think for me and for our coaching team that is so important is to just push them a little bit and go you know what do you want out of life like in the nicest way possible do you want to be doing this job for the rest of your life or do you want to do something else what are your dreams and the majority of the time as we build confidence throughout the coaching journey you know through, through the physical development the health development and also the mindset they're like shit I can I can do more and for me that I personally find that more empowering and more rewarding as a coach than the physical changes um we call it like the switch um so as coaches we'll get we'll have a fucking like party when someone has this mindset switch where all of a sudden they want more and things are easier for them like yes they've popped their tire this week they've smashed their phone and they've had a big deadline at work but it, that's part of the game like it, it's just another obstacle for them to overcome and when they have that mindset switch from everything's against me the world hates me too this has happened but I still did all my workouts and I actually felt really good it's like shit like that is impact to me more than anything 100% I had the same thing last night, the final check-in that I did. And it was the final check-in of a client that had worked with us for like two or three years. She was like, at the moment, life is an absolute shambles with her business. Um, there's a lot of work that she's having to do. She's like working double time, complications with family, stuff like that. And she's just like, do you know what? There's a lot going on, but I've kept my head. I'm just showing up. Felt yeah. good getting to the gym. It was nice to use the iron therapy. And, and that is, 
is crazy versus someone, you know, in their first week of coaching, like, I can't do any of this. My <laughs> life's falling apart. Like, I don't even have a second to fart. And it's like, <laughs> we will find those seconds for you. <laughs> like, we are going to make it work. One important question. Do you believe in yourself? Wholeheartedly, yes. Have you always wholeheartedly believed in yourself? I think to an extent, yes. Um, again, going back to like A-levels, I was like, I can do more. And this is really funny actually, but I've always been quite entrepreneurial. So when I was 13, I ran a jewelry business, fun little fact about me, called EBGB Jewelry, if anyone wants to know. I had a website. I, at 13, like was making jewelry, selling it online, had an Instagram. Actually, maybe I was more than 13. I was probably like 14, 15. Um, taking it to the post office, posting it to customers, getting reviews from them. And I remember someone at school, I was actually telling Ollie about this the other day. Someone at school said, why would anyone buy that from you? And I went, why not? And I think it's just always been that like, I knew I could do more. I've always had this little thing inside of me that's known like, you can be more than this and you can do more than this and you're destined to more than this. I had a bit of a hard time at school with like bitchy girls, obviously, as everyone knows what they're like, but just not really fitting in. And I always, the one thing that kept me going was always like, you're not going to be here forever, but they will. <laughs> and funnily enough, they're the, the girls that are still at home doing the same thing, sleeping around and doing what they do. With 17 children. <laughs> yeah. And yes, not that I'm judging because like you do you, whatever makes you happy. But also like I've, I think I've just always known a little bit deep inside me that I like, I could do more. And even with the, the uni situation, like knowing when, everyone said drop out or quit your business. I had lecturers say, you know, your side hustle shouldn't be a priority. You should be focusing on uni now and had friends who I thought were friends say, you can't do both, like be realistic. Fuck yeah. Um, no, <laughs> but, but yeah. To I, anyone who <laughs> didn't quite see that, Evie just held up two giant middle fingers <laughs> to those people, um, right? <laughs> deservedly so. Uh, no, but yeah, I think, you have to have that belief in yourself because no one else will. And back to what you've said, only you can make it happen. No one is coming to save you. If you want to do something, fucking do it. But no, expect to have people not believe in you. You have to have that belief in yourself, I think. So believing in yourself and you say that it had always been something that intrinsically was within you. Do you think that's nature or nurture? I think nurture um, from a standpoint that I consumed a lot of content that was very much believe in yourself. And look, I've been reading self-development books since I was like 13. I can't lie. I fucking loved a self-help book. Always wanted to fix myself. Um, I genuinely have like <laughs> my mom would get these Amazon parcels and they were like how to unfuck yourself kind of books and she'd be like <laughs> what the hell are you Evie are you okay <laughs> yeah literally um, but yeah I definitely think nurture because I forced myself into that and compared to my family which is not a very big dynamic of growth at all and it's very much super complacent very victim mentality um, I think that my nurture was not from the people immediately around me, but the people that I listened to and I consumed. Had it not been for them, don't know where I would be. So big up to Grace Beverly if you were listening to this because you changed my life. I'm interested to know, do you think it was because you were brought up in an environment where people didn't do that work that you chose to do it? Because for myself personally, I, aside from a younger brother, I think it kind of stopped at me but I have been brought up in a family where everyone is smoking, out of shape, overweight, um, suffering health complications. Even I suffered health complications, you know, at uni when I was diagnosed with IBD, that was the absolute final straw. I was like, I cannot, I cannot go through my life not being healthy because that that is my life. Yeah. Like my life is has the foundations of health. So that's where everything changed. It took me getting really sick and being told I had a chronic illness to start doing any work on myself. And then it spiraled into this whole like, oh, now we work with loads of women and get yeah. them in shape. So do you think for you, you were kind of, you know, uninspired by your home environment or the people within your family? And you were like, I don't want to be like that because that's a normal thing that will cause people to want to change. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, my kind of, my family, they all stay in Manchester. 
all like same kind of area same council houses like they all do the same thing do you the live life like for their one holiday to Ben Benidorm every few years right um my parents then they did my mum and dad worked so hard and they moved away we moved to Wales um but it was st it's still very like do the do what you can not do as best as you can um so I think I, I remember just seeing the same people work at the same little tuck shop every single day. And I, I remember thinking like, are you going to move on? Like young girls, like just doing it. And th they say like, oh, I'm going to do this for the summer and then I'm going to uni. And then I'm going to do this for the summer and then I'm going to go to uni and going to travel. And then they just never did. And they never moved on. And now they're like a lot older. And I remember thinking, I do not want that to be me. And I remember actually being in the restaurant that I was talking about earlier and thinking like these people treat me like shit I'm earning five pounds an hour I am working my ass off running this whole restaurant at 16 on my own the entire front of house taking a lot of money for this business owner um and getting five pounds an hour treating like shit I, I remember thinking like I do not want this for the rest of my life Jesus Christ so I think it was a little bit of lack of inspiration and wanting out seeing what other people I think you, you can take growing up on social media two ways. You can take it as, oh, it made you compare yourself and it made you see really plastic lives or you can see it as shit. Like these guys are earning a lot of money and living the life that I want to live just because they posted some pictures online. And I took that approach to it. Like if they can run, like if they can be YouTubers and make a living off that and travel and build their businesses and do uni, then I want a bit of that. Like why can't that be me? I don't want to stay here in this hometown where there's nothing for me. So I think it was that lack of inspiration from those around me and the huge inspiration from external sources who will never even know that I exist, but just that impact that they had. And if they had that impact on me, I could have that impact on others. And I think that's such a cool feeling. Yeah, it's what we learned this weekend, which is we were at a business conference this weekend. And one of the things uh, that was spoken to us about by a very very successful man um who's built up one of the most impressive real estate companies in dubai was when he started in real estate and he looked at a guy who had a, a suit which was four times his monthly salary and he said why can't that be me mm. and it's almost more impressive that it's the self-belief and the questioning well why can't i do that why yeah. can't i make that work not like oh I, I desperately want this really expensive suit to get validation from others. But he was like, you know, you, you see it through a different lens. It's like, whoever this person is has likely wearing this crazy expensive suit has likely worked so hard to get to that stage where they're able to afford something like that. Like it's, you know, pocket money. And he was saying, why not me? Like, why can't I have the minerals to do what yeah. this person has had? And yes, okay, we don't see everyone's path to where they get to in life. Some people have, um, you know, a, a red carpet lined path sometimes in certain places. And let's just say we've all probably had our strikes of, of luck throughout our journeys, but there's also a lot that we've had to, you know, build from the ground up. If not, even completely pull things down and rebuild it again, as we'll know as business owners, it's something that we do probably on a quarterly basis. Um, <laughs> so that aspect, why not me? It's a big question that exudes confidence. And to achieve that confidence, there has to be some element of self-belief. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have that self-belief, as we've spoken about, and you don't have that nugget inside you, which is like, you can do it, you can do it, then you won't ask the question of why not me? Now, when we're talking about people who are completely unconfident, they don't really believe in their abilities, they kind of just feel like they've been dealt you know, a shit hand in life, that is something where it's difficult to pull yourself out of. Yeah. How do you feel the stoic philosophy has helped with building up your confidence? Because personally, I feel like I've seen your confidence flourish and thrive yeah. over the last year, like impressively. So do you have any links towards what you've learned from your self-development work and how that's helped you to just keep that confidence growing? I was exactly that person you described beforehand. I would look at people that I've done well. And I think I've, I've learned this from my family, but I'd always be like, lucky for you. Like, 
you you must have rich parents or bet it was easy like and I was such a little negative Nancy thinking everyone must have it easier than me and I really really did take to that lifestyle and I, I it was easier to almost blame other people for why I wasn't you know it's jealousy isn't it like I want to be where you are but it's easier to say lucky you than it is to actually work to get there because yes we may have different starting points but there's no reason that I can't get there um but I think it's something that you learn um through exposure more than anything definitely what you said like my confidence even this time last year I remember going to that first ever event and feeling so much anxiety feeling completely out of like that I didn't belong there huge imposter syndrome just didn't feel like I deserved to be there to now being like oh we're all on the same we're all the same here like doesn't matter how much you make we're all the same because we're all the same people just for some context like Evie was literally like in the corner of the room avoiding (laughs) eye contact with people and I was like I'm gonna go over and say hi to Evie make sure that she's okay like hey Evie how are you enjoying Dubai you're like I'm so nervous like I I, seriously remember it like it was yesterday and that's why like now you sat here in front of me and seeing you at the event I'm just like something's happened here (laughs) (laughs) yeah I think it is just exposure like pushing yourself into those uncomfortable situations um I've done a lot of mindset work with like learning about myself and who I am what my values are um which has meant in that this last year I've grown like in myself so fucking much um and I think even just listening to podcasts like geez I listen to a lot of podcasts and you don't realize it because it's not like you're actively like reading a book or you're actively like delving into every single thing but those things stay and the majority of the people that I listen to are self-development and they're all saying the same shit packaged in a different way so if that message is constantly being reinforced that I can be more and I can control what I do and it's all my personal responsibility I feel like that then just becomes a part of you It, it just becomes you because the principles of self-growth is just like with your physique the principles are very very similar and it's constant repetition (laughs) until it is ingrained in your mind I think that's probably been the biggest determinant of that self-development there was there's no one moment that things have just clicked and changed it's just that one percent better every day exposing myself to that every day pushing myself out of my comfort zone every single day and pushing to get one extra rep or to do an extra 10 minutes or I don't know to help another woman then that I think brings more confidence than anything and also action I know they were speaking about this in the event but you can you can't like you can't bullshit yourself into feeling confident like you can't look in the mirror and be like I'm confident now because I've done one gym session and I've listened to one podcast like boom fixed (laughs) it's it is you can't bullshit your way there you have to do the dirty work you have to do the uncomfortable things you have to prove to yourself that you are that person and then over time you become that person but you can't fake it till you make it I don't think I don't think that's possible absolutely not and that comes down to knowing your self-worth but you can't have self-worth until you create it for yourself first so with the personal development side of things as you say you're listening to things in the background I love that you said it's the same shit packaged in a different way. Just in in reference to what those experts speak about. So for instance, Stephen Bartlett, he's going to largely talk about business side of things. Then in another field of self-development and learning, you might have Lisa or Tom Bilyeu that are getting different guests on that will help within other vicinities of life. So you, it's almost like you can have these key pillars of these inspirational people that you'll go to and listen to for different bits of advice, you know, in certain places. I know that if I want someone to brutally tell me that I'm never, ever doing enough, I'm going to go listen to Alex Hormozy. <laughs> so that is so important to have, I think... It's very different now because in the past we would have had, and we still do now, have mentors in specific areas of life. Like we've got our physique coaches, we've got our therapists or our mindset coaches, we've got our business mentors. You know, gosh knows how much money we're spitting out on these (laughs) experts all all the time. So worth it though. And it just returns exponentially. But it's different now with social media and the way that education is in abundance and it's so free that 
we have so many people to learn from and it almost feels like we have these mentors who have no idea that we exist but we listen to their stuff all the time um so who would you say from podcasters or even certain authors have had the most pivotal role on the transition of the mindset that you've kind of built that confidence over the last year what a great question um so i am very i'm quite an um analytical person in not in the sense of numbers because that's not me but very much in terms of like analyzing who people are how they have that confidence so you know you listen to Chris Williamson and the conviction he has in his voice every single word like touches your soul (laughs) just a little bit right and I think you know Chris Williamson Stephen Bartlett um Grace Beverly again gonna shout her out because I feel like even just watching her Instagram, you know, I, I don't even listen to that many of her podcast episodes, but just watching her grow throughout the years, Chrissy Chella as well. Don't believe everything she does within her training um, and her programming, but hey. Um, but yeah, just watching them grow as people has been incredible. Growing from uni students, like they both were at one point to see where they are now. It's like, okay, well, I could probably do that. Um, even just... Oh, like everyone everyone has had a different an impact in a different way obviously Alex and Leila Hormozy are incredible just at putting things ex- so bluntly but so what you need to hear is like yep okay you're good um and then I think like people that don't necessarily realize they have an impact like you know friends that are coaches that you know even yourself like we had a conversation this time last year and you taught me through my confidence. <laughs> I remember you giving me a little pep talk on how to show up as a more confident leader and a more confident business owner. E- even small conversations like that have a, a long lasting impact on you and shape you as an individual. I definitely think that and just practicing those things on a day by day basis and practicing saying things with a bit more conviction or with a bit more trust in myself has made a huge difference i love that it is just being a sponge basically is the is the methodology that we're trying to explain also just reference to grace beverly if anyone's listening and they were in that scenario where they imagine themselves being in our shoes when we were like i don't know 16 17 and we were perhaps just getting into the groove of studying getting pretty militant with that because it's something that we know how to manage our time very well and we've continued to refine that over the last few years but to anyone who's just doesn't even know where to begin grace beverly's book working hard or hardly working absolute game changer because she gives you actual techniques that you can employ the freaking eisenhower matrix i still do that when i feel too overwhelmed and i'm like delegate this delete this (laughs) so it's really nice when you've got that bite-sized information. So she is an OG queen and just shout out to her (laughs) and some resources in case you guys need it. So then we come on to self-worth, confidence. All of that has grown. With this newfound power, because that's what it provides you with sense of purpose, self-worth, you value yourself, you're confident. What have you been able to do better, whether it's within business or within your own personal journey, since those things have been at a much higher level? I think I have literally grown in every single element since working on those things. My relationship has improved because I can communicate better now, not from an emotional state. My relationship with my parents has improved because, again, can communicate now a lot better, know what I want, know why I want it, know that I deserve to have that and can communicate that in a way that speaks to them because, you know, learning about communication is so important. Um, A lot of books on that, that I can recommend if anyone's interested. Um, Then also, you know, business, obviously being able to show up for my coaches better. I previously was not very confident. And then because I wasn't very confident, I wasn't able to guide them in the best way, which hold, held them back. Um, my clients, like being able to help them, being able to speak more honestly, not beat around the bush. I was such a beat around a busher and I didn't want to upset anyone. I didn't want to hurt anyone's feelings. But then recognizing that if I don't 
help someone improve their mindset with training or improve their mindset with time management or improve their mentality with like life in general, then I'm actually doing them a disservice. So I'm not actually helping them by being super kind and saying no worries when they miss things. So helping clients out better, um, just being more assertive and being more sure of myself has been a big one. Uh, if you ask anybody um, that that's known me for a while, I used to ask everyone's opinions on everything. I could not take action on my own accord. I needed like even buying a top, like, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Does it look nice? Does it make my shoulders look too fat? Like, what do you think about this? I ha- I needed everybody's reassurance before I made a singular decision. And I think over the past year, since not like working on that, I literally be like, okay, I'm doing this. Like I've done this. I've, I've just done it because I trust myself now. And that comes again with that self-worth, that confidence, when you build that and you build the evidence, which again is confidence that you know what you're doing. And if you don't, well, you've learned a lesson, but it, it just provides you with so much more trust in yourself, knowing that you will ultimately, everything will be okay. You know, like again, stoicism, but if it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, then you've learned a lesson. You never lose, you only win or you learn. And I think that has been so empowering for me to no longer be stuck in this box of needing other people's validation from earlier, no longer needing anyone's approval, no longer needing their reassurance that I'm making the right decisions to just have that wholehearted trust and confidence in myself that what I do is going to be okay. And if not, then at least I tried. 100% girl boss. Like (laughs) I would, let's give that a clap. I honestly can't wait to see to see where you are five, 10 years down the line, just for some context, tell the listeners how old you are. 21. She's 21. (laughs) You are five years ahead of me. And I find it absolutely crazy because where you've said, you know, uh, understanding your self-worth, your value has given you the confidence to no longer need validation from others. You will have those difficult conversations. You will make decisions that if it's a harsh decision or it affects someone else, but it's for your benefit or that of your business, anything like that, you will do that. That's a lesson that I've only learned this year. So you are so, so far ahead of your time. I I seriously think, Evie, you're going to end up writing a book one day. (laughs) Like you're going to end up writing a book. Your, Your book is going to, maybe in the meantime, we should make like, a reading list <laughs> if, any, if anyone wants yeah. uh, an Evie Dawson uh, and, and Millie Tchetkovich reading list we can get that written up but I reckon between us we have read a lot of books so many books so many books and to because in reference to a piece of content you made I think it's just important that we mention <laughs> it to anyone who struggles to find the time to read or to commit to self-development what would you advise <clears throat> clear the throat um you literally just read like one page a day but stop fucking buying books and downloading the podcast but not doing the work it's one of my pet peeves and it's a pet peeve because I used to do it like I'm saying it from experience where I would buy the self-development books I would listen to the podcasts I would like just mentally masturbate and like consume all this knowledge oh my gosh I feel amazing I feel so empowered and then do fuck all with it and still be in the same place with my confidence, still be in the same place with how I felt about myself asking for everybody's opinion. So I never actually applied any of the knowledge I was learning. You're better off rather than buying 12 books, read, just buy one, read a page a day, a page a day is nothing. And then put that into action. So I'm not someone that's going to like, like write down things or I don't highlight books or anything, but I'll read a good quote and like, shit, write that down or put it in my journal and reflect on that. And I think that that is the most important part because consuming without taking action on anything, like you're wasting time. (laughs) You're just wasting your time and energy and money because you're not doing any of the things that the book or the podcast says to do. It's like, it would be like almost going and listening about money every single day, but then having no money. Like it, it wouldn't make sense. So why are we listening to mindset things every day and then still having crap mindsets? Like you have to take the action and do what the book says for it to actually be effective. So if you're listening, don't just read, implement. 
feel the fear and do it anyway. Yeah. Because that's what's stopping people from implementing the things. Or again, they're just not in an uncomfortable enough position where they want to change. Yeah. If someone keeps wanting to spunk their money on ridiculous extravagant things, even though they've read the book on how to become a millionaire, they and they value that more, they're not going to do the work that's yeah. required. So are you in an uncomfortable enough position to change? And then actually just take the freaking actions. Yeah. Although I felt like you came for me a little bit there where you said, stop buying all of the books because I've literally got like a to be red pile, which is taller than me at this I point. I do as well. I do as well. <laughs> but you know, you'll read them. That That's the difference. I mean, hey, I may buy some new ones before I get to those ones, <laughs> but they will get read eventually. And more than anything, they will get implemented. So yeah, no more wasting time. No more, you know, thinking, do I, don't I? Are you in or are you out? Yeah. Because sitting on the fence is just going to, cost you so much like the time delay of making the right decision or absorbing more information being able to take that action this is probably why you are five years ahead of me because I was (laughs) wasting my time um but I'm so freaking you know glad and so happy that there's just another impressive phenomenal woman in this industry doing the damn things that other women need um you are phenomenal Evie thank you thank you so much where can people find you um instagram so my handle is ev team edc or i'm on i have a podcast as well called evolve with ev so i'm gonna black million to join me (laughs) for that as well which is you know about evolving obviously mentally and physically so they're my two my two main gals yeah definitely go and give evie a follow and if you guys have enjoyed the podcast please share it to your stories tag us both because we appreciate it i think there's so much in here that it's it's like a gift for someone else to listen to okay so you're basically gifting your friends you are welcome thank you so much for joining us and we will catch you in the next one guys much love